Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday the 14th of November. Myanmar junta soldiers flee to India after border clash with rebels. Bangladeshi scientists determined to stop dengue outbreak. And Nepal bans Chinese app TikTok alleges damaging social impact. And now for all the details. Dozens of Myanmar junta soldiers surrounded two Indian police in the state of Mizoram a day after anti-junta rebel fighters gained control of part of a porous border with India. According to Mizoram police, in the last two days, 42 Myanmar army soldiers have either surrendered or have been caught by the state police, while more than 5,000 people from the neighboring country have taken refuge in Indian villages along the border. Myanmar's military leadership is facing its biggest test since taking power in a 2021 coup after three ethnic minority forces launched the coordinated offensive in late October. The offensive, named by rebels as Operation 1027, has also made inroads in junta-controlled areas on the border with China, where Myanmar's military authorities have lost control of several towns and over 100 military outposts. This morning again, we still capture two Myanmar army and apart from that another one is also injured uh, that is already admitted in Champai Civil Hospital yesterday evening itself so the total Myanmar army who got surrendered in the hand of Mizoram police are 42 in number but uh, as I already said they are handed over to some rifle and the government of India will decide and they are fed. And India's Foreign Minister S.A. Shankar on Monday contemplated the significant transformations that India has undergone in the last 10 years, attributing them to the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Jay Shankar, who was speaking at a gathering of the Indian diaspora in London, said these 10 years have been a socio-economic revolution in India. He also highlighted the profound transformation in relationship between India and the UK and said it is time to reframe the relationship which is suited for the contemporary era. In the last 10 years, if I were... The world has changed, our relationship has changed, UK has changed, India has changed. So you may ask me, what has changed in India? You know the answer. The answer is Modi. Each one of these schemes has delivered. But the point I wish to make to you, it is when you connect these dots. It's really when you see the cumulative impact of all of this on the lives of people. That is the change which is underway in India. Moving on, in a significant diplomatic move, India, the UN spearheaded recommendations for Canada to fortify measures preventing attacks on worship places and effectively address hate speech. Highlighting the misuse of freedom of expression, India urged Ottawa to disallow activities of groups promoting extremism and enhance measures to address hate crimes against racial minorities. A similar stance was reiterated by Bangladesh and Sri Lanka as they urged Canada to intensify its efforts to combat discrimination against migrants and the racial discrimination affecting the rights of immigrants. The remarks come at a time when ties between New Delhi and Ottawa have stranded after Canadian PM Justin Trudeau linked Indian government in the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Bangladesh and Sri Lanka have shown vocal support to India in the tussle and have termed Canada as a safe haven for murderers and fugitives. Well, anti-Pakistan sentiment is on the rise in Gilgit Baltistan over wheat shortage and the cut down on subsidies, which is severely affecting the masses in the occupied region. A report. Political activists of the Awami Action Committee have raised concern over the issue of wheat shortage and cut down on subsidies that is particularly hitting the poor in Gilgit, Baltistan. There have been several protests against the Pakistan government over unfair taxes being imposed and price hike of food items, but all in vain. Locals accuse Islamabad is pushing more and more people into abject poverty through its failed economic policies.
پہلے والا جو یہ وزرا ہیں اپنے مراعات اپنے وہ شاہی اخراجات کم کرنے کے بجائے یہ گریموں کے پیچھے لگے ہیں ان شاء اللہ یا یہ وزرا رہیں گے یا یہ وزرا رہیں گے یا یہ مدرب گلگت بلدستان کے عام رہیں گے احتجاج میں کھڑے رہیں گے اگر احتجاج نکال دیا تو ان لوگوں نے ہم احتجاج بھی کریں گے اس کے ساتھ ساتھ اگر دھرنے کی شکل دیا تو ہم دھرنے کو بھی جائیں گے اگر ان کے ساتھ اگر کوئی ایسا واقعہ ہو کہ جیل تک جانے کی اگر ضرورت پڑے ہم ان کے ساتھ جیل تک بھی جائیں گے ہم جی وی کی جو حقوق ہے ہم وہ حاصل کرنے کی کوشش کریں گے And as rising temperatures and a longer monsoon in Bangladesh are providing ideal breeding conditions for the dengue spread mosquito, a scientist is determined to stop the deadly outbreak. A report. Kabirul Bashar, an entomologist at the Jahangirpur University in Dhaka, has spent the good part of his career studying mosquitoes, hoping to find ways to prevent the spread of mosquito-borne diseases including dengue fever. But out of his 25 years of research, he had never seen such severe an outbreak as that recorded in Bangladesh this year. Nearly 290,000 people have been infected and the death toll has topped 1,400 so far with hospitals overwhelmed. Bashar has decided to intensify his research on the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads dengue. He said the mosquito is adapting now to climate change pressure and has changed ways of breeding and biting. तापम्रा आर्द्रता बिस्टीपात पैटार्न क्योंकि चेन्ज हो अक्टोबर मासे माझामाझी समय इस समय बिस्टीपात देखी बर्षाकाल मत यो एक जलवायु परिवर्तन फले सीजनल पैटार्न चेन्ज ये घटे और जखनी मौसुम परिवर्तन हो मौसुम परिवर्तन हार संगे संगे एरिस मशार जो उपयोगी बिस्टीपात उपयोगी तापम्रा उपयोगी आर्द्रता एरिस मशा पे जा जखनी मौसुम की परिवर्तित होरिस मशा तरह परिवर्तन करसेप्टेशन चेन्ज हो बिस्टिपत फले विभिन्न जगह पानी जमा हेखने एरिस मशार प्रजनन हो डिम पड़े एवं वंश बृद्धि Bashar, who is also the only scientific expert in the country's National Anti-Dengue Committee, suggests it would be, however, impossible to stop dengue spread unless the general public participates in the breeding source management. And Nepal on Monday announced a ban on Chinese social media platform TikTok citing disturbance in social harmony and goodwill by the misuse of the popular video app. Minister of Information and Communications for Nepal, Rekha Sharma, informed about the decision and said while a policy level has been imposed from Monday, technical aspect about banning would take some time. Nepal in the past four years has recorded a total of 1,648 cases of cybercrime out of which the majority were regarding the content on TikTok. While opposition CPN UML has criticized the government's move, saying it lacked effectiveness and maturity, residents have welcomed the decision. This may vary depending on individual perspective and priorities. Uh, I believe it would bring a positive impact to our country by government taking the step of banning TikTok. So primarily, the main issue that needs uh, that ne that needed to be addressed was uh, incorporating legal uh, regulations on TikTok, which was uh, not present in our country. So it created uh, a disparity among uh, people of uh, various communities and religions, uh, which um, really went against uh, the um, the diversified. Um, um, country of our of nepal this very tiktokly aile mani saruko anabasik samaya kharkiya go chha samaya lai barbaad gare go chha mani saruma aru lai dekhao na ka laghi dila si bostu aru parti mani sko lagani bordo chha ta kati pe kura aru photo aru animation garne ani aru lai chen tiktok ko maddeem baata ya uta dhamgya unne paara le athaba aparte chhe roop ma aru ko baare ma नराम्रो धन्यवाद रू पनी आज दिन पौर्ति दिन बढ़ देगा को कारण निकल रहा है। Also, the decision comes within days of the introduction of directives on the operation of social networking 2023, under which social media platforms operating in the Himalayan nation need to open their lives and offices in Nepal. And Sikhs from across India on Monday took part in a colourful procession in Amritsar city held annually a day after Bandi Chor Divas or Prisoners Liberation Day which coincides with Diwali.
The day commemorates the return of 6th Sikh Guru, Guru Har Gobind, to Amritsar after he won his freedom from Mughal Emperor Jahangir and also got freed 52 princely rulers who had been incarcerated in Gwalior Fort Prison. The occasion is marked with a procession by Nihangs, the Sikh warrior sect, who displays their horse riding skills and traditional martial arts. Particular scenes which leave everyone in awe are the performers standing on two or four running horses simultaneously. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.